We are literally right on the field as Dodgers take some BP here and get ready to take on the Boston Red Sox and try to even up this series at two games apiece. We're going to hang out with you guys for the next 35 minutes or so, give you an all-access look at this whole setup for a World Series. You've got Fox National, Major League Baseball Network here as well. They've both got setups on the field and then just hundreds of reporters. It is a free-for-all down here for the media and it was like that last night in the tunnel as well as the Dodgers and the Red Sox basically played a doubleheader, an 18-inning affair as media were literally lined up in the tunnels from about the sixth or seventh inning on. Everyone was just kind of huddled around these TVs watching this as many of you were at home. And it was, a, it was an amazing sight to see both the Boston media and the LA media up and down and feeling like this thing was gonna be over, especially when Max Muncy hit that near home run in the 15th and then finally got one to go out in the 18th. So now that we've set the table here and Dodgers are hitting home runs into the stadium, into the stands here at BP. I'm going to have Danny Ayala, our amazing photographer, walk with me. And we're just going to kind of give you an all-access look. I want to actually start with this, this Fox National set as we whip around this way. And you guys see this huge crane camera that's set up and all the multi-cameras. This is the, the big setup on the third base side. And then as we now walk through here, you're going to see, I mean, it's literally hundreds of media members lined up along the field as the Dodgers take BP right now. The other setup on the other, on the first base side, which we'll get to in a minute, is the MLB network. And it looks like they've got guys on set there that are getting ready to rock or either they might even be already broadcasting at this point as we are about two hours away from first pitch here at Dodger Stadium and we make our way through countless media members. Here's, let's whip around real quick and bug this guy named Alden right here who's usually covering the Rams and I'm just gonna put him on the spot right now. Oh my God, am I live on he, he, he let me actually sit behind him for a little bit in a seat that I wasn't even supposed to be in last night and then fortunately I, I found security, a real seat nobody came. yeah it, because you didn't even really offer to move over or like want to move your laptop for me but it was okay because you let me sit behind you in like a little cubicle um, like a cupboard talk. as long as you didn't talk we were okay yeah just keep your distance <laughs> so uh, I want to you know was that three days ago by the way that feels like a, like a year ago that, that was last week for sure um, I just wanted to say that at some point around 1130 I left. You know, I can be honest with you guys. You're my family. I left. I went home, and I got some great sleep. You, on the other hand, well, probably had to. to, to you right now. <laughs> what time did you get home last? Or what time were you here at the stadium to last? So I was just talking about this with somebody. Um, by the time I got to yep. bed, um, by the time I put my head on my pillow, it was five o'clock in the morning. The sun was about to come up, uh, and then about three hours after that, I woke up to a crying baby, which is my life now. And now I'm here at the ballpark. October is just this wild ride, man. You just got to strap on and hold on for dear life. And for everyone at home that's watching this on CBS Live on our, on our website, let them know how they can uh, for, just introduce yourself and let them know how they can read your, your work on ESPN. Well, hopefully my work is not as bleary-eyed as it was yesterday, but you could read me on ESPN and you can follow me at Alden underscore Gonzalez. Hopefully for games that do not last seven hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> uh Amongst the, the press box area, because we were there up until maybe like the seventh inning, and then I went down into the tunnel and watched the game with the media members in the tunnel on the TV. For all of you guys that stayed in that upper press area, at what point were you just like looking at each other thinking, A, is this ever going to end, and B, should we just quit and go home, because what is the point here anymore? I'll tell you what, it actually gets really interesting when you get these really long games, and I'll preface this by saying, uh, I do not do well in cold climate, and so it got down to about 65 degrees at about the 12th inning, and I left. I had to go inside and seek shelter. That was too much for me. But I think as this game prolongs, and it, as you can continue to get weirdness on top of weirdness on top of weirdness, I think you root for it to never end. I really found myself at some point when Eduardo Nunez 
could barely walk and he basically was the hero and the goat at the same time and weirder stuff just kept happening I kept rooting for this game to prolong I don't know why I think I'm just a crazy person but I don't think I'm alone I think you just kind of root for the craziness to continue because we've never seen anything like this and if you're gonna come to a World Series game and you're gonna put all the work in it's pretty cool to see something you've never seen before and we got that last night except you you went home early absolutely that is what I did I'm a self preservationist if that's a word because uh, I also I was I was wasn't feeling good and I was like look man y'all ain't paying me to stay any longer right. I'm going home uh, let's let's finish up with this though this game now that the Dodgers have kind of responded and shown that they can beat this team and not only that but have done so in a way with an 18 inning game yeah. where a you show your guts but B you really maybe can see some of the strength in the the depth of the bullpen of the yeah. Dodgers as opposed to the Red Sox do you feel like not just the win but the way in which they had to win can now give the Dodgers not an upper hand because they're still down 2-1 but there's some internal confidence like hey if we can tie this thing up now maybe the pendulum is completely swung back our way I'll tell you what Kevin there I had a prevailing question in my mind after that game and it was did the Dodgers win the series I feel like, and who knows what happens today, maybe Rich Hill doesn't pitch so well, but my preeminent thought after last night's game was, I feel like the Dodgers won the series today because you look at how Alex Cora went all in to win that game. And mind you, I don't blame him for doing it. If you have an opportunity to go up three to nothing in the postseason, in the World Series, you do it. Wins are so valuable in the month of October. But he burned through Nathan Eovaldi. He used David Price on two days rest. He used Eduardo Rodriguez, who's starting this game. They're going to be very shorthanded. Give Dave Roberts a lot of credit. He didn't burn through Rich Hill. He didn't use Clayton Kershaw. His pitching looks so well set up for games four and five. I feel like the Dodgers didn't just win game three. I feel like they put themselves in a really good position to win games four and five. And if they win the series, you're going to look back on game three and be like, this was the defining moment of it all. See, kids at home watching this, if you're asked and you're a reporter and you're asked to be on live and there's someone who knows more about you more about the subject than you you find that person no matter where they are and you put them on live and it makes your own job easier so Alden cannot thank you enough Kevin, that's why you're a pro, man. make sure to check out his work on ESPN and we'll let you enjoy the rest of this one hopefully it doesn't go seven hours thank we'll see you up in the press box right, I'll bring you some peanuts or something for helping us out thank you so much bro. I appreciate you uh, we're going to keep walking here now as we make our way. It looks like the batters are done for the Dodgers in their little BP session. But that doesn't mean we are done because we still want to do this for another 25 minutes or so. So we are going to walk this way and make our way down this line. Excuse me, sir. Not sure if the Red Sox are going to do a BP session after this or if they've already gone before. I probably should have asked Alden that since he knows everything about this series. But one thing I know is how to walk and also how to avoid the enemy. When you see Kurt Sandoval from ABC, you'd give him a swim. <laughs> Kurt, no, that was great. We're on live CBS. That's the enemy right there. We're going to keep walking. <laughs> And as we're making our way now toward the MLB network setup, you'll see they have a pretty impressive stage set up as it looks like they're already on live air right now. Pardon me, I don't have MLB network or cable television at my apartment because I'm not as wealthy as some of you watching this. There's Maria, Maria. Okay, so here's, here's what I want to stop and, and give you guys some insight on right now. Right now, I'm with our camera guy, Danny Ayala. His son is also here, following in the footsteps of his esteemed father, who was just given an award a couple nights ago. Danny will have to give me some insight in terms of what the actual award was called. It was something like for showing up to work for a couple years. So we're going to make our way to Danny's son, who's actually got him on I don't know if this is a cell phone video or something. Danny, Danny Jr. over here. 
Uh, were you getting him on Instagram Live or what? Just a video. Just a video. Just a video. Okay. Okay. And so he is with Maria. Maria, I want you to introduce the both of you guys and give us some insight in terms of what you two are accomplishing today because we're on cbs.com live right now so let's give let's get some let's get some insight into what you are doing and why you would ever give Danny's job knowing Danny's uh, poor record for work establishment uh, why would you give him an opportunity? First of all, I have the younger version, and he is extremely good at his job, so his father must have taught him something. And he's awesome. He lasted through that epic game last night. I know not everybody here stayed, but... Uh, yeah, I went home. I already told him I went home. It was... Okay. Yeah, we yeah. told him that. But, but Daniel did stay, and we were in the locker room at, I think it was about 1.45, talking to... Walker Bueller, who turned down that magnificent performance last night. Everybody kind of forgot about Walker, right? But he did, and we hung in there, and now everybody's ready to go, and even the series up today. That's it. And for people watching this on CBS, how can they, can you introduce yourself, your work, and what you and Danny will be doing here tonight? Yes, Maria Soraya with Playing the Field. You can go to playingthefieldtv.com if you don't have Cox TV in the South Bay. And uh, we are just covering the World Series Game 4, and uh, we'll see what happens after the game. So for you, as a, uh, as a growing videographer, someone who's establishing yourself in this career, what was it like for you? Do you feel like you were kind of earning your stripes last night, sticking around here for that long of a game? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, it was actually something that, it's a bucket list moment. It's one of those things that, uh, you know, I was too young for the 88 World Series, but I was here for the 2018 Max Muncy home run. So it, it was pretty special, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to tonight and tomorrow as well. So, For you guys last night, we were all in that tunnel yes. and down on the clubhouse level. And we're all watching these TVs, and um, in the 15th, Max Muncy almost hits a home run. And then in the 18th, he finally does. I don't know how much time you were able to spend with Pops, but for you, kind of a night removed from that, do you think those are the moments that you and, and Danny Sr. over here will, will be talking about down the road? Almost definitely. Like I said, uh, he's, he's always told me about the 1988 World Series, how he was in the tunnel and how he experienced the whole thing. So I was sitting there, and he actually came up to me halfway during. He was like, how do you like it, son? Yeah. You know. And uh, I actually got to experience my own little version of that, and it was awesome. And uh, I'll, I'll remember that always. And you know, it was, it was a great experience. We'll finish with this. How grateful are you for Maria to give you an opportunity to get yourself established in this? And what's it like for you guys as you're covering, really, one of the biggest sports events that we know about? Well, um, I think our chemistry is actually getting better by the day. And um, I, I, love, I love working with Maria. And if it wasn't for her, actually, I probably wouldn't be at the World Series right now. So I'm very grateful for that. And I hope to do many more uh, sports events with Maria and just keep on rocking it, you know? Thank you guys so much yeah, for taking you. the time. We will look forward to seeing you throughout the night. And uh, hopefully the Dodgers can, can even this thing up. And I hear that you actually will be staying until the very end of the game tonight, Kevin. I will be staying once again until 1130. <laughs> if the game is still going on at that point, I will gladly take myself back to the house get some more medicine and try to feel even better than I do today because I need to sleep as much as I can get it. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you guys soon. As we make our way down the line, Danny, thanks for rolling with the punches here. And, oh, it looks like Danny's shed a little tear there as we walk by, <laughs> as, we, as we walk down the line and make our way toward the, uh, the MLB Network setup. We are now about an hour and 40 minutes away from the first pitch. Of course, that will be Rich Hill making the first pitch as he tries to give the Dodgers a, a great start. You know, we haven't seen him go much more than five innings, and it looks like, Danny, I'm sure the lighting here is pretty tough, right? It's okay? Um, as the sun's kind of beaming down on us back from uh, the back behind Dodgers Stadium, uh, Rich Hill will get the, the start tonight. And so far, kind of the, the benchmark for him has been five innings. Now, if he can go past that and give the bullpen a little bit of extra help coming off of an 18-inning game, the Dodgers will gladly take it. Um, but I'm not sure that they expect Rich to go much more than five, maybe six innings in this game against a, a, a very good Red Sox lineup that, quite frankly, throughout this series, 
has done the little things better than the Dodgers. And I'm still waiting for the Dodgers to move a runner over from first to second with, you know, no outs and do some of the little things that can really help you beat what is one of the best teams record-wise that Major League Baseball has ever seen. The Red Sox were tied for the ninth best regular season record of all time. They were 9-2 and two in the postseason up until last night, so they're 9-3 and three now. So this is a record-wise an all-time great team that the Dodgers are facing. And sometimes you have to be willing to do some of the things that are tougher. You know, it's easy to get up there, and I say it's easy. It's easy for these multimillionaire supreme professional all-star players to get up there and swing for the fences. But sometimes you want to get that guy over. And I think a lot of us media members, as we were sitting in the tunnel last night, were, were wondering at points when the Dodgers would start to do some of the little things, lay down a bunt, move a guy over and advance him. Now, fortunately, it didn't come back to bite them. Max Muncy, after narrowly missing that home run in the 15th, <clears throat> was able to come back with a home run in the 18th. And so they got the win. And so all is good. And, and you don't worry about so much of that little stuff. But if the Dodgers aren't able to get two home runs tonight, as they did last night, will they still be able to claw and scratch out a win? Uh, that's really the question that I have for this group. But regardless, Rich Hill will be on the mound. Uh, Max Muncy, despite the Red Sox having a starting left-handed pitcher in this game, Max Muncy will start, and so will Cody Bellinger. Those were guys who, in games one and two, did not get the start. And we actually just saw Mariano Rivera, one of the best uh, closers and probably the best closer in the history of Major League Baseball actually walk through. Um, I'm not sure what his, his role is here today. As we know, he was a longtime Yankee, um, but he's got to be doing some kind of broadcasting work. But this, these are the moments. The World Series is where these guys make their names, as Mariano Rivera did countless times. And last night, Max Muncy was able to do that. So despite the Red Sox starting a left-handed pitcher, the... Dodgers will start Max Muncy, and they will start Cody Bellinger, something that they did not do in games one and two. And Dave Roberts actually faced some criticism for that, for not <clears throat> starting two of his stronger left-handed bats in that game. Um, let's start to make our way, Danny, as we're going to – I want to give them a look at the MLB Network setup. We've got about 15 minutes left um, that we're going to be doing this live broadcast right here on, on CBS.com or CBSLA.com as we move down. You can see some of these reporters still here set up. Doesn't look like they're live right now. Looks like they're practicing. Yeah, she's practicing, so let's, let's move on down. And now as we start to get a quick look at the MLB Network setup, as you guys can see, it's, it's impressive. Um, I'm not sure where you want to stand, Danny. Is that going to work for you? So Danny's going to give you guys a, a look-see there on the um, far side of the stage. You guys will see Pedro Martinez, the longtime Red Sox starting pitcher and legendary pitcher, I should say. Uh, but that's, that's quite a setup that looks like it's not even on. I'm, I'm taking a look now. Okay, there are two, maybe three giant wheels underneath the, the set that you can't really see, but... So they literally wheel this thing on before the game starts. And uh, it's, it's, quite, it's quite the setup that they've got going here as they, uh, they keep people going and, and ready for this game and get them all set not only pregame but postgame as well. Um, Brian Kenny there on the, on the far left that you guys will probably recognize from uh, his work with uh, at ESPN for a long time. He does some boxing work as well. And I actually got a chance to, to meet Brian Kenny yesterday. I was eating a Dodger dog that was covered with carne asada, pico de gallo, and avocado. And he saw me eating it. And you could tell there was like this look of A, disgust, and B, intrigue. And uh, 